Hey, singers, here we are on the roof of New York Vocal Coaching. You know, they say it's lonely at the top, but I ain't lonely because today we're gonna explore your vocal range from bottom to top. I'm Justin Stoney, the founder of New York Vocal Coaching, joining you for episode 106 of Voice Lessons to the World. Today's question comes from Cotter L. in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Cotter writes, Dear Justin, how do I find my vocal range? Perfect question, Cotter. It seems simple, but you're right, it's actually not. Vocal range has many considerations, and today we're gonna make sense of it all. To start, I think it'd be helpful to go to the lab and run some experiments on my own voice. Vocal range comes down primarily to what registers you count as your range. For example, in my own voice, if I count everything, I can pretty much sing the whole piano. There's subchest, chest, me, 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 Mix. Me, 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 me. Falsetto. Me, 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 me. Flagellet. Me, 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 me. And whistle voice. So in my own voice, that's somewhere around six octaves. Now I've been fully steeped in vocal pedagogy for over 20 years, so it took me a while to develop all that stuff. But like so many singers, I was originally taught that there are voice types and that each of us is limited by our voice type and we must never try to break out of our voice type or else something very bad might happen to us. But come on. Even without getting into the pedagogy, just using some common sense. What do you think? Are we forever doomed by our voice types? What do you say? Doomed or not doomed? <laughs> Let me see that again. <laughs> just one more time. <laughs> exactly. The fact of the matter is, if you want a bigger range, you can go and get it. We don't need to be limited by voice types. But I should explain. Voice types are labels like bass, tenor, alto, soprano. Most singers really dislike being labeled and put into categories. If you feel this way, you are right, my friend. This antiquated thinking becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, if someone tells you you're a low voice, it's very easy to believe it, that high notes are too difficult, that you just weren't meant to sing in another tessitura, that going outside of our natural range is wrong or bad or unhealthy. Yet this is just not the case, especially when we're talking about contemporary singing. In contemporary singing, voice types are mythological for most intents and purposes. An alto or a bass is like a leprechaun or a minotaur or a unicorn. In reality, if you want to be a tenor, you can learn to be a tenor. Or if you'd like to be a soprano, you can learn to be a soprano. It all comes down to training, exercising, stretching, and practice. If I had a nickel for every time I've seen a low voice eventually become a high voice, I would break the piggy bank. <laughs> However, in classical and choral singing, it's a different story. In opera, we have what's called vocal fox. A vocal fox is a classification system that describes not just the range of a singer, but also their resonance characteristics. You see, when you need to project your voice without a microphone, the amplification of your instrument matters. That's why classical singing has vocal fox, like coloratura soprano, held in tenor, lyric baritone, or basso profundo. Vocal fox help determine which repertoire is appropriate for a singer based on their unique physiology. 
Voice types can also matter in choral situations. When a choral director is trying to decide which voices blend best together, they might assign different voice types for blending purposes. While voice types and vocal fox are necessary in some situations, I beg of you good people, don't be limited. Do not let yourself be limited by voice types. The entire concept of voice types has been sentencing singers into vocal prison cells for generations. Look, I've taught over 20,000 voice lessons at this current moment, and I solemnly swear to you, I have never met a singer who could not dramatically improve their range and defy their voice type. Which leads us back to Cotter's question. How do I find my range? That's what we're gonna do in this week's Voice Lessons to the World Challenge. For today's challenge, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step process for figuring out your true vocal range as well as your stylistic vocal range. The first step is to find your lowest connected note. As I showed you earlier, some singers can develop a sub-chest region, but we don't usually consider this to be your true vocal range. To find your lowest note in your true vocal range, we need to figure out the exact point where chest voice meets your vocal fry. Wherever this happens is your voice's lowest note. So let's figure it out together. Guys are gonna be right here, may, 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 and ladies right here, may, 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 we're going to go down by half step. Try very, very hard to stay in chest voice and don't go to vocal fry. Eventually it's going to have to happen, but try to delay it. Pay close attention to where your chest voice stops. This is what we're going to say is your lowest note. And here we go. May, 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 may. May, may, may. That's it. Right. May, may, may. May, may, may. May, may, may. Good. May, may, may. And that should be it. Wherever you switched, we're going to call that your lowest true note. Now, let's find your highest disconnected note. Next, we're going to find your highest note in your cricothyroid dominant registers. Oh, that's falsetto, head voice, and flageolet. Don't worry if you would never sing these notes in a song. Here, we're just looking for your absolute top. For this one, we're gonna use the tiniest W sound. Ooh, not even ooh, ooh, W, ooh. So keep your lips like this the whole time. Guys and ladies will be in the same octave. Ooh. Stop when you can't go any further, and here we go. it. Great. Keep it up if you can. Right. Wherever you maxed out, that's what we're gonna call your highest true note. On to step three. Congratulations! Now that those two steps are done, you know your full vocal range. When people ask you what your range is, you can say something like G2 to B flat five or E3 to D6. This is your true vocal range. But we're not quite done. 
We also need to figure out your vocal range as it applies to your style. Like if you're a belter, we need to know which note you can belt or mix up to. Many times with contemporary singing, we're not interested in what you can do in falsetto and head voice. Instead, we want to know which note you can do without switching to these other registers. Or if you're a female legit singer, we need to know how high you can go in head voice without switching to flageolet, which leads us to step four. For this step, you'll have to do some experimenting on your own. Ask yourself, what style do I sing? And for my style, how do I need to sing the notes? Like if I'm a belter, I can't be switching to falsetto. Don't you draw the queen of diamonds, boy. I'll have to build a mix that helps me get up to those notes. Don't you draw the queen of diamonds, boy. Or if I'm a legit soprano, I can't be switching to flageolet. I'll have to make sure I can do it in head voice. Ave Maria. So your stylistic vocal range might be something like this. G2 to B flat 5, belt to A4. Or E3 to D6, head voice to B flat 5. Knight to E5. Spend some time experimenting with the vocal registers in between your highest and lowest notes, and you'll quickly get a sense of your stylistic vocal range. I also recommend revisiting our Vocal Register World Tour on this channel for lots of info on this. Whew! Awesome! We have successfully determined your full vocal range and set you on a great path. Keep us posted on Facebook, Instagram, all the usual suspects, and send your questions to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com. Here's some more things that will help you to take your vocal range to new heights. For voice lessons or Skype lessons with the NYVC staff, visit us at NewYorkVocalCoaching.com. If you'd like a vocal course that you can do at home, check out the Voice Lessons to the World Vocal Course. This 12-part program takes you on a singing journey from beginner to master level vocal exercises. You can find it at VoiceLessonsToTheWorld.com. Or if you'd like free vocal tips sent to you each day, sign up at DailyVocalTips.com. And now, here's Justin with this week's vocal benediction. In life, it seems that everybody's always trying to get to the top. Yet the people we idolize might sometimes disappoint us, and the people we overlook might surprise us. So what's left? A whole lot of time somewhere in the middle. So throughout life's ecstasies, tragedies, and mediocrities, sing, and a part of your soul will always be lifted high.